In this last chapter, we're going to put several of the elements that we've already learned together to create a really neat effect. And I'd like to demonstrate that effect before we get started in, in our learning. So I have my teapot and my plane here, and I'm just going to scrub the timeline in 3ds Max. And what you'll see is that our geometry and our plane just kind of burn away. And this is the effect that we're going to be achieving in this chapter. So I'm going to show you all the elements that need to fit together in order to achieve this burning away effect. The first thing that we need is a way to define regions of our model that we want to cut out. So here we have areas that are opaque and areas that are completely transparent or, or cut away. And this effect is called alpha test. So what I'm going to do is just scrub back here to zero, and I'm going to take my teapot of my plane. This is the finished version of our shader, and I'm just going to apply the start version. So this just has the teapot and the plane and our regular normal mapping, specular, you know, ambient color, all of our standard shader features. And now what you'll see that I've assigned this start material to it is uh, when I scrub the timeline, uh, nothing's animating. So we're going to fill in the code in uh, FX Composer that we need in order to achieve this effect. So I'm just going to scoot Max over here, and we'll jump back into FX Composer. I'm going to close the material editor in Max for now and just kind of adjust things. All right, so here's the finished version of our shader. We're going to start, uh, or we're going to work on the start version of our shader. So in order to cut away areas of our model, the first thing that we need to do is come down all the way to the bottom of the shader and add a few lines of code into this area here. These, these elements of the shader are called render states. And I talked about a little bit about this in, in DVD 1. So what we need to do is come in here right under Cull Mode. And we need to add two lines of code that tell the graphics card that we want to use the output alpha color uh, as, as the uh, definition of what we're going to cut away. So we're going to say alpha test enable equals true. Alpha test is the feature that that uses the alpha channel to cut out. It's not transparency because there are no varying hues of opacity. Uh, it's just a strict cut. It's either on or it's off. So when we say alpha test enable equals true, that allows the resulting alpha channel to actually cut out our geometry. And there's one other thing that we have to tell it. Um, we're going to say alpha ref equals 128. And alpha ref is the shade that we're defining as the line. We have to draw the line somewhere. So we have our alpha channel going between 0 and 255. And somewhere in there, we have to say, if it's above this value, then it's opaque. But if it's below this value, then we're going to cut it out and just not draw that pixel. So what we've done is drawn the line at 128. So anything below 128 will be completely gone. And anything above 128 uh, will draw. So now we've got our alpha test uh, set up. Let's save our shader, come back over here to max, and see what result we get. All right, so you see right away our alpha test starts working. So I'll kind of zoom in here, and you'll notice that it's cut out some of the geometry. Now this is working because I have alpha channel in my diffuse texture. So here's my color texture, my diffuse texture. And I'll go ahead and pull up the material panel again to show you what I'm talking about. In diffuse texture, I have this texture called D wipeout test dot DDS. And I'm just going to switch over to Photoshop here really quick and show you what that texture looks like. First of all, in the red, green, and blue channels, it's just gray, so pretty simple. Just uh, 
gray, red, green, and blue. But I've designed the alpha channel specifically for this wipeout test. So if you take a look at the alpha channel here, there's this really interesting gradient from light to dark. So we have black kind of here in the cracks, and then as you get up away from the cracks, it goes to white. And this is what gives us, uh, back over here in Max, this uh, kind of jagged, cut-out look. And you'll also notice that I've added some noise into uh, my alpha channel here. And this noise also helps to make these edges uh, look quite a bit more rough. Can you see how that looks kind of sizzly? That kind of adds to uh, the effect that things are getting burned away. All right, so alpha test is the first element that we need. That allows us to define areas of uh, uh, opaque pixels and areas of pixels that we want to cut out. Um, but still, you know, nothing happens when I'm moving my timeline. And my alpha channel is just this static image. So wherever pixels are brighter than 128, uh, you're going to have the pixels drawn. And wherever they're darker than 128, uh, the pixels are going to be hidden. So that means uh, we need to do a little bit more work. We need to, to add some things to our alpha channel so that we can animate uh, the brightness and the ability for us to cut that out. So if you look here in our material panel, in the finished version, I actually have a brightness and a contrast control. And so that's what we're going to add next. I'm going to come over here to our shader. And I'm going to come right here under glossiness. And just in the interest of time, and since we've already gone over these UI controls, I'm just going to paste these in from outside. So I've added our float brightness amount. And I made it so that it can go from negative 1 to 1 with a UI step of 0.01. And our contrast amount, I made it so I can go from 0 to 10 with a step of 0.1. So now the next thing that we need to do, well, I'll go ahead and hit Save here. And you'll notice when I bring up the material editor again, now I have the brightness and contrast controls in here. Uh, but they don't do anything yet. So if I move these guys, obviously they don't do anything here because I haven't hooked them up in the code. So I'm going to go ahead and come down, well, I'm going to pick this brightness amount value here. And I'm going to come down to our pixel shader. And we need to apply this brightness amount to our diffuse alpha channel. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, instead of saying return ambient plus diffuse plus specular times light color, I'm going to break this out so I can have a little bit more control over it. I'm going to say float for out color equals, and then I'm going to take these elements here and paste them up here. And then I'm going to say return out color. And what this allows me to do is, is monkey around with these settings just a little bit before I do my return. Now, I specifically want to work with my alpha channel. So I'm going to say out color dot a, the alpha channel equals, and I want to make sure that I'm using the alpha channel, alpha channel of my diffuse texture, color texture. So here's where I'm sampling my diffuse map. So I'm going to grab color texture, and I'm going to say out color equals color texture dot a. All right, so this is pretty much what we were getting before. I'm just defining our out color as the alpha channel of our color texture. And you see that change show up over here, right? So the next thing that I want to do is use my brightness control. So I'm going to come back up here to the top and grab my brightness amount and come back down here. And when you control brightness, pretty much you just add the value. So I'm going to say color texture dot a plus brightness amount. So what this will allow me to do is slide this brightness slider up and down and either add or subtract from my alpha texture, or yeah, for my diffuse texture alpha channel value. 
uh, which determines the actual amount of cutting here. So I'm going to save this and come back over here to max. And so now with my brightness, I can actually scroll this guy. And now you can see as I'm scrolling this that I have control over how much is being cut. Because what's happening is, uh, actually, you know what? Just to kind of illustrate this a little bit better, I'm going to say, instead of return out color, I'm going to say return out color dot A. Now, normally, you'd think, you know, return is returning a float 4. And out color dot A is just a float, right? It's just a single channel. But in this case, the compiler is smart enough to say, apply this single channel to all four. And this is a really neat way of debugging things. If I want to see just one element of my shader working, for example, I could say return ambient. Or in this case, I'm saying return out color dot A, because I want to see what is the result of color texture dot A plus brightness amount. So I'm going to save this. And even though that's a single channel, like I said, the compiler is smart enough to apply that single channel to all four of the values of our float four. So I'll come back over here to max. And now you can see that it's actually drawing the, the actual color of out color dot A. So now as I slide my brightness, you can see that it's adjusting the color of our alpha channel. And it's also clipping it out for us. So that's a really interesting way of, of debugging values. If, if you want to see a value partway through your shader, you can just return that. All right, so I've got out color dot A, and I want to set it back to the way that it was before. Uh-huh. Now I also want control over the contrast of my alpha channel. And controlling contrast is, is a little bit different than controlling brightness. You can't just add contrast. And so I'm going to come down here and say out color dot A equals Now I have to do a, a couple of little operations here. Out color dot a minus 0 0.5. And I'm going to put this guy inside parentheses. And then I'm going to come over here and say plus 0 0.5. And then I'm going to multiply this by our contrast amount. So I'll come up here to the top. And I'll grab our contrast amount variable, bring him down to the bottom, and say contrast amount times this. So this is a formula for doing uh, contrast. Brightness, you just add. But then contrast, you actually have to multiply by this value of minus 0.5, and then add 0.5 back at the end. And of course, you have to end with a semicolon. So I'll save this. And now. I can grab my contrast amount and play with it to get varying degrees of contrast. All right. So now we've got all the elements that we need for our effect, except for the little sizzling along the edges. And in order to add that, I'm going to use an if statement. Now, if statements can be kind of expensive uh, in terms of the number of instructions that your shader takes. So it's good to kind of use them sparingly. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and add it because uh, it's a pretty cool effect. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to say if our outcolor.a is less than or equal to 
0 0.55. Then we're going to change our out color dot RGB to a new color. So what this is doing is our, our out color gets clipped off at 0 0.5, right? Because 128 is 0 0.5. But we're saying if it's less than 0 0.55, so we're 0 0.05 right along the edge just before it gets clipped out, we're going to make that a solid color. So the new color will say float four or float three rather, because it's uh, out color RGB. Our new float we're going to make it orange, so it's going to be 1.0, 0. 0, and oh sorry, 0. 0.5, and then. 0, 0.0, so orange. And we'll save this. And now, aha, so we have our edge, which is between 0 0.5 and 0 0.55. Anything between those values is going to be this orange color. Now you'll see the usefulness of this contrast. Because as I lower the value, there's more and more of our pixels that are between 0 0.5 and 0 0.55. But as I raise the contrast, I can sharpen up our edge until it's just right at the very edges of, of where our pixels are getting clipped. Now the last thing that we have to do is animate our brightness control. So I'm going to turn on Auto Key, and I'm going to set our brightness control kind of high here at the beginning so there won't be any clipping. S set it to 0 0.6. Then I'll come here to the end of the timeline and bring our brightness control all the way down so that the model's completely clipped out right around 0 0.5. And now as I scrub the timeline, we get a model that either draws itself in or burns itself out. So that's our uh, burnout or wipeout effect. And we did it with the alpha test feature and using brightness and contrast and this if statement that finds the pixels that are right on the edge before they get cut out and ch changes them to a different value. So that's a pretty cool effect and you can do lots of variations on this to, to achieve the effects that you're looking for.